Let's talk about qualitative and quantitative variables. Every single variable in statistics can be classified as one of those two types. If it's a quantitative variable, a quantitative variable is a number, but the number means something. It might be a count or measurement, a ranking, or some kind of a quantity. Now, if we switch over and talk instead about the qualitative variables, those are a quality. I've got that root word quality, and that's gonna be some kind of a characteristic and identifier. Usually they're words or names, but they could also be numbers as long as the number is only used as an identifier. Now I've got a bunch of variables here. Let's run through each of them. Let's start with birthday month. So birthday month would be like January, February, which month were you born? It is a word and it identifies the month that you were born. So we're gonna go ahead and put that under qualitative. It's not a quantity. Next, let's take a look at number of French fries. Okay, so number of French fries. So say you order fries and you get it in this fry holder sleeve thing and you count up how many that you've got. So you're gonna end up with maybe 10 fries or 25 fries. Those numbers are not just an identifier, it's a quantity. 25 would be more than 10 fries. So we're gonna put that under quantitative or a quantity. Moving next over to GPA. GPA is another number, so an excellent guess would be a quantity or quantitative, but we can think of that GPA as a measurement. So that GPA or grade point average gives us a value that represents the grades you're getting. So I'm gonna put that under quantitative for a quantity. Next is the student ID number. Now, student ID number is also a number, so a quantity would be a really good guess here, but the student ID number is just identifying you from somebody else. Your student ID number might be a higher number than the person sitting next to you, but it doesn't matter. It's just identifying you from another person. So we put student ID number here under qualitative. It identifies you from another student. Okay, are you getting the idea? Next is screen time. Okay, so screen time. How much time did you spend on your screen today? That's a quantity or an amount. So we're going to put that one under quantitative. Let's move on over here to hair color. Hair color. So my hair might be blonde or brown or red or purple. Those are names. They're definitely words and it identifies one color from another. So that one lands there in qualitative. Type of pet. So a type of pet, a cat, a dog, a hamster, a bat, whatever you happen to have, that's going to be qualitative. And then finally, before we get into discrete and continuous, let's take a look at weight. So weight, you're going to stand on that scale and it's going to give you a number, hopefully a number that makes you happy. And that is a quantity. It's an amount of pounds or kilograms. Now we can also take a look at the quantitative variables only and classify them even further into either discrete or continuous variables. When you're thinking about a continuous variable, think of a sweeping second hand as you're looking at time on a clock. Continuous quantitative variables can take on any value along that number line. Time is a great example. Age is another great example of a continuous variable because you're continually aging, right? I am now this old, another second older, another second older. Um, time, temperature, weight, age, height, those are all great examples of continuous variables. Discrete variables tend to be ones that are counted some kind of an amount. So let's further classify these. I'm going to just use D for discrete and C for continuous. So the number of french fries, I am taking out the french fries and I am counting them. Maybe I get crazy and call one a half of a french fry, but I'm never going to go through all of the possible numbers on the number line to count a number of french fries. This one is definitely discrete. Next is GPA. So GPA is a calculation, which means as we do the calculation, take grade time credit divided by the number of credits, whatever it happens to be, I'm calculating it. So I could end up with a whole 
bunch of decimal places that have probably been rounded. Because it's a calculation, this one's going to be a continuous variable. It can take on any number on the number line. Screen time is next. So screen time is time, right? I can sweep through time in a really smooth continuous matter. This one's also continuous. Wait, same thing, right? I could eat a couple of cookies and I could gain a tiny little bit, but I don't just skip from being one weight to exactly one pound higher or exactly five pounds less. So this weight is also a continuous variable. Take a look at my next video here. I've got lots and lots of videos on statistics and variables. Thank you so much for watching.